Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to a new episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today we're going to talk about what to do when we find mushy brown roots on our orchid. How do we even fix this mess? What does it mean? Is our orchid going to die? And well, don't worry, no. Most likely it's not, but I'm gonna show you how to go about things because you do need to address it right away. Before we start though, as always, this episode together with this entire series is sponsored by repotme.com who offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchid. From potting mixes to pots, fertilizers and everything in between. They actually have brand new accessories that I'm very excited about. I'm hoping to present some of them soon on the channel, but anyway, you will find good stuff not only for orchids but also for other houseplants as well, such as cacti and succulents on their website, so I'll link you to them down below in the description and in the pinned comment. Check them out at any time and tell them I said hi. So with that said, let's go ahead and address the mess we have here. Now this is a beautiful phalaenopsis orchid that I recently purchased, I did not repot it. So it is still in its original pot with its original medium and it's a mess. Most brand new orchids and especially Phalaenopsis orchids that you will purchase from flower shops will be a little bit of a mess because they have actually been in this pot for I would say maybe even two years. They're established in the pot and nurseries keep them there without repotting because they don't want to impair blooming. They want to sell these orchids while they're in bloom. But by the time the blooms fall and you get to enjoy them in your home, the potting mix is most likely already old and rotting and who knows what's inside. Sometimes you'll find snails and other pests. Fingers crossed we don't find any pests because the last thing I need is more insects in my life right now after the battle with ants. So what we need to do first and foremost is cut the flower spikes. Are we going to repot it? Yes we are, but first we need to cut the flower spikes because those roots that are brown and mushy, they're not alive anymore. This orchid is starting to suffer from some serious root loss and you can see it in some of the leaves. They are wrinkly, she's getting dehydrated because she doesn't have enough roots to support all of these things. Now the flowers on my orchids are already fallen but your orchid might actually still have live flowers on it or buds. In my case the flower spikes are alive and probably they will not yellow, they will stay on the orchid which is not something I want. Flowers, buds and even flower spikes they consume energy without giving anything back and right now since we don't have a decent root system consumers are the last thing we want. So yeah, we're gonna have to do something most of us don't like to do. We need to cut those flower spikes. Ah, the orchid is attacking me, she's throwing flowers at me. So we need to remove them in order to let the orchid recover. So I have a sanitized pair of pruners. This is a repot me pruner that I've been using for three, four years at this point. I love it. So I'm gonna go very close to the base of the orchid and cut the flower spikes. I don't want to cut them below a node or anything of the source because I do not want to promote additional flower spikes or side shoots. I want them gone. I want the circuit to focus on roots and leaves only. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of the flower spikes. I'm gonna remove the stakes. You can keep the stakes by the way and reuse them next year when your orchid will bloom. And here she is already looking a little bit better. Now though, it is time to repot. So let me clean up my mess and I'll come back to show you what we need to do. All right, the next thing to do is to unpot the orchid. Now, before you repot any orchid, it is a good idea to first soak them for maybe 15 minutes in water. This will make the roots a lot more flexible and less prone to snapping. Roots of an orchid, when they're dry, they are very brittle and very stiff. So it's very easy to snap them. But when they're wet and they're full of moisture, they're a lot more flexible. So it's a good idea to soak orchids, even if you're dealing with an orchid that lost its roots, because who knows there might be a few good roots in there which we might be able to save so mine is already soaked I hope you can see through the pot what I'm gonna do now is press a little bit on the pot just to make sure that whatever root is attached to the plastic is detached now I don't think I have too many roots so I'm not all that worried and look at this potting mix it is awful it is so broken down. It's definitely not suitable for the orchid. Oh my gosh, it also has a 
very interesting smell which I always dislike to inhale but hey <laughs> so slowly and surely we're just gonna massage the roots and look at that in the center of my orchid I also have a seedling plug now oof, sorry guys the, the fragrance the odor actually mmm smells mushroomy right so in the center this is a different material it's not bark it seems to be a cocoa choir plug it's very spongy so being that it's in the center and it's covered by the potting mix you don't know about it you don't know it's there and it retains too much water for the very center of the orchid also it is very 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 old at this point more than two years old whenever nurseries repot orchids they actually up pot them why because they don't want to set them back the plus side they get to sell them faster because they get to bloom faster downside the middle goes bad faster than the other potting mix and it can start to affect the roots so I do not suggest anybody to up pot the orchid this is how we call it whenever you do a repot make sure you remove as much of the old medium as possible honestly this is not an uncommon sight with new orchids and if this happens to you don't worry most likely you didn't do anything wrong you might have um, watched tutorials and watered the orchid correctly but if the medium was already old and broken down there isn't much you could have done to prevent this outcome all we can do now is make sure the orchid gets a fresh start right so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of this mushiness that I see every root that looks like this mushy and papery let's say and brown and leaves behind a strand or a string I'm gonna cut all of these because they're dead and they will continue to rot in the new pot that's not what I want gently I will remove as much of the old medium as I possibly can from the good roots we do have good roots as well but whatever is dried mushy brown all of these things I'm going to cut away mind you you might find some white whitish brown ish maybe roots stained roots that are not mushy they're still pretty stiff do not cut those away even if they're white it doesn't mean they are dead or that they're sick it means they did not receive light and they didn't photosynthesize which is absolutely fine roots main function is not to photosynthesize even though they can they need to absorb water and nutrients and attach the orchid those are their main functions those are what they're best at everything else is bonus <laughs> but yeah don't cut away roots that seem discolored or whitish or yellowish if they are full of substance they're stiff it's okay so I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the orchid properly and cut away everything that I see dead and when I'm done I will come back this can take a while I like to take my time but there is no point in boring you guys with this alrighty we're back a few things that we need to discuss here first of all I threw away all of the old potting mix we cannot reuse it anymore it is rotting no amount of disinfecting boiling and all of those things will make it good again because even if you kill the bacteria now by boiling they will reappear just like that because the medium is already rotting so you can use it in the compost pile or you can dispose of it however you see fit in your region but do not reuse it with your orchids as for the orchid I washed a little bit the root system at the same just to remove whatever debris it still had I didn't do a super good job at it because it's not all that important I didn't see signs of pests or anything so I didn't apply anything on the root system I don't have issues with snails with phalaenopsis in my area so no hydrogen peroxide no anything and most importantly I wanted to get the aerial roots wet as well which did not get wet during my soaking here's why this orchid already does not have a very good and very healthy root system to be honest I'm not entirely sure how many of these roots even if they're alive now will still be alive a few months from now so what I plan to do is pot the aerial roots as well generally speaking it's not a good idea to do so because sometimes these roots do not adapt to the high moisture environment that a pot will provide so generally we advise beginners to leave aerial roots be outside and pot the let's say potted roots back into the pot in this case though we're dealing with an emergency pretty much and I want these roots to help the orchid get hydrated because they are healthy you can see we have growing root tips and in my experience phalaenopsis orchids actually adapt really quickly 
to a potted environment if I make sure that I give it a chance as well. And I'm gonna clarify what that means a little later. But honestly, I would not do this with other types of orchids like Oncidiums, maybe even Cattleyas. They do not work like Phalaenopsis. Phalaenopsis are very adaptable plants. Now, the pot. Usually you will see people advising you to adapt the pot size to the quantity of roots you have. I will advise you against that with Phalaenopsis orchids. Phalaenopsis, the flower shop kind especially, are very very big root producers. This little girl, in six months she will fill an entire pot if you make it smaller than the original pot. You can actually repot after six months, but I would advise against it because, as you know, roots tend to grow through the drainage holes, through the slits. They will find a way out and when you unpot the orchid, you will break those roots. It's a truth that we all need to accept. I would rather break the roots every few years than every six months, you know what I'm saying, especially when we're dealing with a sick orchid. What I would do is pot the orchid either back in its original pot or a slightly bigger pot. For me, I will actually go with this pot, which you can see. It is around two centimeters or so bigger in diameter than the original one. That's about an inch. And this is the one I will go for because I intend to keep the orchid in this pot for at least two years. This gives me enough time to establish the orchid, make it strong again. And even if I will damage the root system when I repot in two years, it's not going to be as quote unquote potentially devastating as it will be six months from now. So I'm telling you this off of my own experience, not off of things that I read on the internet. Things work differently for different people. I'm just not comfortable repeating that stuff that I read online because you know, that's my experience. Right, the potting mix. I will make sure that the potting mix is airy, not just because Phalaenopsis are epiphytic plants and they like airiness, but also because I intend to pot aerial roots and I want to make that transition as smooth as possible. As some of you might know, in my environment I can get away with full sphagnum moss with all of my orchids because it is just so hot and dry. But in these tutorials, I prefer to explain and show you, let's say, a more approachable way for beginners, a safer way. And even for myself in this particular case, I do believe it's safer to go with the slotted pot route. And by the way, this is a repot me pot. I love it, it's pink and it's gonna go so well with the decorative pot. So the route that I'm gonna take is a mixture of bark and sphagnum moss. These are the materials that I have available here. You can go with a pre-made Phalaenopsis mix. Again, that is catered to work and be suitable for multiple types of environments. And Repotme has beautiful ones. A few years ago when I had the privilege to try them, I tried them, everything worked great. Now I cannot import them to the EU anymore. It is what it is. But what I will use is a mixture of sphagnum moss and bark. This will give me both humidity in the pot and water retention, but also air. Right, so now I'm going to make a little bouquet <laughs> of roots, just like so, and place my orchid in the pot with as many roots as possible. If some of these aerial roots snap a little bit, it's okay. I have a snapped one here. Phalaenopsis are great in this department as well because snapped roots don't die off. If it was a Cattleya, things would be a lot different, but it's a Phalaenopsis and Phals are superstars. That's why you should start with a Phalaenopsis as a beginner. They're so forgiving and they will not put you off and make you scared of orchids. Right, so I start with a bottom layer of sphagnum moss. This helps me absorb whatever water I have left in my decorative pot after watering. Sphagnum moss is so absorbent, it's beautiful. The idea with it is not to compact it. That's when it can get suffocating. But if we make sure we keep it fluffy and nice and airy, it is so, so helpful, especially in hot environments. So I'm gonna alternate layers of sphagnum moss and bark. Right, the second to last layer will be a sphagnum moss layer and do please observe how I'm not pressing down on it and compacting it. Even if I have quite big air pockets, 
it's okay. We're gonna address some of the biggest air pockets, but small air pockets are perfect. That's what I want. This orchid loves air. Now on this layer, let me just fill a few empty pockets here. On this layer, I am going to use slow release fertilizer. Phalaenopsis orchids are heavy, heavy, heavy feeders. They will survive. They will still bloom if you don't feed them heavily. But if you want a out of this world flower show, you need to provide fertilizer. Liquid fertilizer is great. I sometimes forget and I don't have time maybe sometimes to prepare it. So I also use slow release fertilizer just to make sure my orchid has something even if I'm on the run and all I can do is just run some tap water through the pot. You can use a, um, let's say, balanced fertilizer like 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, whatever. All of those NPK numbers, they can be equal or you can find one with a higher N and a higher K, so first and last number. I find, in my experience, the middle number high doesn't make Phalaenopsis bloom better, it doesn't make any orchid bloom better. It might work on other plants, but not Phalaenopsis. Right, so I add a slow release fertilizer on this layer because I want its, um, let's say, byproducts to flow down in the pot as I water. The last layer, I always make it the bark just to avoid additional cyanobacteria and algae from forming at the top, which in my environment, they do form a lot. For some of you, it might not be necessary to add a top layer of bark or to finish with bark if you're doing this sandwich <laughs> style. Uh, but for me, it, it's important to finish with bark chips. Right, now you might notice that I have a very big air pocket here. Now, you can leave it as it is, as I was saying, Phalaenopsis really do not mind it, but if you want to fill it up with a few pieces of bark, because it's, it's just affecting you <laughs> somehow, um, you can use a bambi skewer, insert it at the edge of the pot, right here where the air pocket is, and wiggle. There you go. Hold the pot straight <laughs> as you do this. I don't see what I'm doing, but wiggle it, and all of this bark will fall in that pocket. I'm just gonna turn this to my side to see what I'm doing. Ah, there you go, much better. And voila, air pocket is no longer so big. And my orchid is done. Let me show you something. If I press on the potting mix, look how much my finger can go in. I'm not dislocating or dislodging the medium, I'm compressing it. This is how airy it is. This is how airy I like to keep all of my orchid pots. This will serve two purposes. One, it will allow the root system to grow and as it grows, yes, it will compress the medium, but it's not going to just remove it from the pot. So it's gonna last much longer in this pot before you end up with like a pot full of roots that simply dry out in the day. And also it will retain that precious air around the root system. My philosophy in growing orchids is provide both moisture and water at the same time. This is how I discovered roots grow the fastest and the healthiest. And particularly if you decide to pot aerial roots, you must pay attention to the air pockets and provide air pockets. And I think we are good to go, right. So I'm gonna clean up my space, come back with the outro and show you the decorative pot as well. And as we are off camera, what I'm gonna do is also run some water through the pot at the tap, nothing fancy, just run water, let it drip, let it get rid of the excess and put it in the decorative pot. Alrighty, here we are, we are done. The decorative pot that I'm using is one from Ikea, which seems to suit these repot me pots extremely well. This is a five inch pot. That would be about 13 centimeters. And these Ikea pots actually fit them so well. They leave some space in between the rim of the pot and the decorative pot for some extra air circulation. Uh, but obviously you can keep these pots like on a dish or something to protect your furniture. You don't necessarily need a decorative pot. It's just whatever you like. It's a preference thing. And about this orchid, if you remember, I purchased a few months ago an orchid with tiny, 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 the tiniest pink flowers. This is it. She is very floriferous. She's 
beautiful and that's something I need to keep my eye on. Some of these hybrids are a little too floriferous for their own good uh, but now that the flower spikes are gone and she's repotted in fresh medium I think she will do great. I also added a little tag. I don't have an ID for this orchid. I just named her Phalaenopsis Tiny Pink Flowers. That's how she will be named and I really like the contrast between this pink inner pot and the white pot. It goes like with its flowers. That's why I chose the pink repot me pot. Anyway, so here we are. We are done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned something new. Thank you repot me for sponsoring get another video and I will also share with you in the description a review or like a presentation of these repot me pots. I have one like from six or seven years ago. It's not a uh, tutorial but if you want to learn more about the pots you have everything linked in the description. Right, so with that said I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye!